Meanwhile, more political fallout from January 6 and that deadly insurrection on the steps of our nation's capital. The Republican National Committee has censured Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger for their words, quote, participating in a Democrat-led persecution of ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. This, of course, further splits the existing divide in the GOP between supporters and critics of the former president. ABC News political director Rick Klein joining us now with more on this. Rick, you know, we just mentioned uh, describing January 6th as, quote, legitimate political discourse. Let's not mince words here. I mean, January 6th was an insurrection and an illegal attempt to stop one of the most important political uh, processes that we know of, the certification of a presidential election. So how are we still calling it anything other than what it is? Yeah, and that's exactly what the Republican National Committee did with very stark language. Uh, they said that the, the persecution of individuals who were involved in that legitimate political discourse was animating what happened on January 6. They did not specify, or in one way or the other, either ruling in or ruling out, the idea that violent actors, people who breached the Capitol, people that assaulted uh, police officers, people that threatened uh, individuals like Mitt Romney and even Vice President Pence at the time, whether they were excluded from the, 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 the language of the resolution. Instead, it was that blanket statement saying uh, legitimate political discourse. There's been a whole lot of cleanup in the last couple of days by the Republican National Committee, but the clear language uh, very much stands at odds with the reality as it was experienced by members of Congress and by the, by the entire nation on January 6th of last year. So what does censuring these two representatives actually mean for both Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger? Well, on one level, absolutely nothing, because they've been censured by lots of local organizations and uh, nothing stops them from continuing to be members of Congress. Uh, this censure resolution doesn't even call for them to be expelled from the House Republican Conference, uh, although some people have asked for that. We already know that Liz Cheney has lost her spot in leadership, but where the rubber might hit the road is in the, the, the degree of financing that might flow toward a primary challenger. Congressman Kinzinger has already announced his retirement, so it's really not relevant for him, but Congresswoman Cheney is engaged in a very spirited fight to save her seat. The Republican primary in August will be very close. There's a Trump-backed challenger, and it's possible now that this resolution is used to open the doors of uh, RNC funding to, to go toward that challenger. That would be an extraordinary, if not utterly unprecedented, move to have the Republican National Committee actively spending and raising money to try to defeat an incumbent member of Congress, much less the, the daughter of a former Republican vice president of the United States. But that is the practical reality of what that resolution could mean. So former Vice President Mike Pence actually spoke on Friday, as you know, using some of his most forceful language to date about his former boss in January 6th. Let's take a listen to that. President Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. And frankly, there is no idea more on American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. Well, OK, he laid it out there. What does it mean for Trump's hold on the Republican Party, you think? Well, it means that there's another path out there. And you heard it from Mike Pence. You've heard it from other individuals like uh, former Governor Chris Christie, the ABC News contributor. People that say, look, whatever happened up to January 6th, January 6th was not, uh, was not appropriate. And the powers that President Trump believes should reside in an individual to overturn the election does not exist, should not exist, and there needs to be a clear recognition of that fact. And it is a fact. It is not a fact, though, that President Trump is willing to acknowledge. He continues to say that Pence was wrong, that he had that power. And in fact, there are individuals running for office that say they would help act on that in the future if given the opportunity. So it still has real impact. This isn't just a rhetorical split. It's several different paths that you can still be relatively loyal to Trump and still say, yes, he was right or wrong about, about January 6th. But it was very, very striking to see uh, the, the most loyal of loyalists in Vice President Pence say flatly that Trump was wrong. So, Rick, before we let you go, we're seeing these reports now that former President Trump might have had a routine of shredding White House uh, documents, which are legally required to keep, of course. What do we know about that and how is this impacting the investigation now? 
Yeah, we know that this was a habit in the White House, that he personally would rip up um, documents as soon as he was done reading them uh, in contravention of, of all, the all the presidential records acts that exist. We also know that the January 6th committee, according to our reporting, has had to go physically to Florida, to Mar-a-Lago, to get some documents that Trump took with him from the White House, whether with, uh, with ill intent or not. Those were not supposed to be his property. They were property of the federal government and ultimately of the National Archives. We know that aides have had to piece together but with, with scotch tape. Uh, some of the letters and some of the documents that, that have been retrieved. It raises two questions to my mind. One is questions of chain of custody. If there are documents that had to be retrieved from another, another place, can you prove that they are original White House documents, that they haven't been uh, tampered with or altered in any way? And, and secondly, the, com the completeness of the record will always be in doubt. There's always the possibility here that there are documents that would be relevant to the January 6th investigation and for historians, for uh, anyone, property of the, the, the federal government that has gone missing and will never be found because it was destroyed, uh, either could not be retrieved or ended up being burned or otherwise disposed with at, at Florida or in Washington. Uh, and no matter what you do, there will be things that, uh, that will not be able to be answered by that committee.